What is up everybody? Welcome back to another episode. In this one, we're finally adding some enemies to our game. It's just one for now, and it's very basic, but we gotta start somewhere, right? And this episode will be a shorter one, but the upcoming episodes will all be about enemies and enemy management. So, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any updates. Now, let's get to work. And to get some enemies into the game, first off, we would need to add a new package. We're gonna call this enemies, because we're gonna have several types of enemies. And in the enemies class, we're gonna add enemy. And this will later be a super class, and then the different types of enemies will extend this. But uh, for now, we're just gonna start off with making a simple enemy class. And this enemy class needs to store a few values. So we're gonna add some float values for x and y. And the reason why we use floats instead of integers is that if we had a speed of 1, which is the lowest possible speed besides 0, when we're moving an enemy, that would make the enemy move 60 pixels per second, because we have 60 updates per second. And it's very difficult to adjust the speed if you only use integers. So we use floats, that way we can add half a pixel or a quarter of a pixel or whatever. And that way we have much more control over how fast the enemy is moving. And later when we need to draw the enemy, every frame, we simply cast the float into integer. And we will also need a private rectangle bounce. And the reason why we're adding a rectangle is so that later on we can add some hitbox to it and damage the enemy, which is kind of the point of tower defense. But we're not going to use this for this update, we're going to do that next one probably, or when we're adding towers. And I'm not sure if that's the next episode or the one after that. But uh, for now, we're just going to initialize it and that's it. There are some other values we won't use, but we can add them now anyways. It's a private int health. Then we need a private int id. And we also need a private int enemy type. And the reason for the enemy type variable is so that later on we can retrieve information specific for that type alone. For example, speed, image, can it fly, is it walking, whatever. So if we have that, we can retrieve a lot of information later. But some of these variables we don't need to take in, but we do need to take in float x, float y, int id, and int enemy type. The ID is different from enemy type. Every enemy will have a unique ID, but several enemies can share the same type. So this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y, this dot id equals id. Or actually, I like to do so. And uh, this dot enemy type equals enemy type. Let's uh, initialize the bounds as well, even though we won't use it, but good to have equals new rectangle. And they take integers and not float, so we need to cast it from float to an integer. Then int y, width will be 32 and height will be 32. That's we already know this because the everything is based on 32 by 32. And we also need to create a few getters. We're just gonna source, right click in here, source, generate getter and setters, select getters. And we can take all of them. Yeah, that way. Now that we have added the enemy class, we will move on to the enemy manager. But we will come back to this class. I promise you there's a lot more that needs to be added. But for now, we're just going to keep it like this and move on to the enemy manager. And the enemy manager is exactly what it sounds like. It's something somewhere where we can manage all the enemies in the class. So we go to our managers, new class, enemy manager. And this one needs a constructor as well, public enemy manager. And this one, I'm 
pretty certain that we will need to use the playing playing scene. So private playing playing. And in save and import it. This dot playing equals play. Yeah. And this class will need a public void draw. Graphics G. And for this video, we're actually going to start using our public void update. Because now we have something that's going to need an update. So we might as well add it right away. And we also need somewhere of storing an image for every enemy. And we can do it up here with a private um, buffered image array. I think is going to be good enough. We just need a place of storage. We don't need to alter it anyway. So enemy images and in the constructor we initialize it enemy images equal new buffered image array and it's going to be this big and how big is that we have one two three four enemies in total so four and what we can do now is to actually create the new enemy so we say private enemy test enemy for now, we, we're not going to keep this, so we just keep, call it test enemy. Import enemy and uh, test enemy equals new enemy. And it needs to take in a position. So that would be 32 times 3. And for y, that would be 32 times 9. And integer or id will be 0. Enemy type. Uh, let's keep it 0 for now. And then save. And in a draw method, we're going to ignore update for now. We just want the enemy to be drawn into the game. And we start out in our draw method, draw enemy. We can say test enemy. We need the graphics to G. And in here, not test enemy 2, let's call it enemy E. And in this method, we simply call g.drawImage, that one, enemy images, we take the first index, then at the position e.getx, and for y position e.gety, null, clear, doom. And it's going to give us an error because it's supposed to be integers and not float so we cast it over to an integer for both of them but we have no images in this array so we might as well do that next load enemy images simple as that create the method we could do something like enemy images zero equals load save get sprite atlas dot get sub image so all enemies are y equals one and then we have x zero one two and three so let's go for the orc so that would be zero x one y zero x one y thirty two by thirty two we could do this for all of them but if we look at our class here, load and save, get the sprite atlas, we are retrieving, or rather, we are loading the sprite atlas four times just to get a small image out of it every time. Right now, it's not a big issue. We only have four images, but if we would have more, that would be a serious performance issue. Very long loading time when all we need to do is actually load the image once get the sub images and then just remove it. So I'm gonna do that. Buffered image atlas equals this. And instead of that, we say atlas, not. You know what, let's, uh, let's add all of them. It's only four of them. We will use them eventually anyways. Three. One, two, three. I'm pretty sure that's going to be correct. Yes, it will be. Times 32, actually. My bad. Two times 32. 3 
33 times 32. So now we have all of the enemies added, or rather the images. Now we need to make sure that we can reach the draw function, and we do that by going into our playing class, because we're gonna create the enemy manager in the playing class. Yeah, I think that's the way we're gonna do it. In case we need to move it to the game class, like we did with our tile manager, then we will do that later, but I don't think any other class needs to access the enemy manager. So we'll see, we'll see. But uh, private enemy manager, enemy manager. Import the class, copy this one. We can create it down here, equals new enemy manager, passing in this. All right, and in render, we draw enemies on top of everything. Enemy hand manager dot draw. That way we have now access to this. We draw the enemy at the position where we gave it or initialized it. We don't move it, anything. We just wanna, we just wanna see it in the game. And I think it's gonna run. So let's give it a try and see what happens. All right, we have our enemy in the game. Perfect. This enemy is quite boring because it's not doing anything. It's just standing there. So next up would be to add some movement to it. So let's do that. And to move the enemy, all we need to do is to go in our enemy class and add a public void move. And we will take in a float x and float y, which will be the speed in x or y. And then we say this dot x plus equals x. This plus this dot y plus equal y. And that way we can change the speed or change the position by adding or removing speed. Now we have the basic code for moving the enemy. That means that we go back to our update class and in here we will say test enemy dot move and for simplicity let's just say point i don't know five float half a pixel per update and we could run it now but the enemy would not update because we're not using this method yet so we need to start from the beginning where we added it in the first place which is in the game class and in here in our update game we will start by updating the game and this is the first time we're actually starting to use the update method because previously we had nothing to update but now we do so we're gonna need a switch here as well like in rendering switch game states dot game state and then we make a bracket hover add missing case statements yes now we have the switch now we should go to our scene methods class or, or interface scene methods. We could add it here, but that would mean we would add it to settings, playing menu and edit. But I don't think we will use update anywhere else but in playing. So let's not add it here and just add it manually inside this class. Public void update. In case we need it elsewhere, sure. I can, we can add it later to the uh, interface but for now let's not so now we have it in our playing then we go into our switch say playing dot update and inside our playing we go enemy manager update and we're currently moving it in the x direction to the right so let's see how that looks and it's working our enemy is moving to the right that's perfect but uh, he will just keep on moving to the right. There is no stops, there is no pathfinding, so he will just keep on moving. But before we end this episode, instead of adding just one enemy, we could add several. And I think we're gonna do that by some clever temporary method, like public void add enemy int x int y. But instead of this test enemy, we're gonna have a array list of enemy enemies. 
and we're gonna add the array list and we're gonna let's just initialize it here equals new array list all right and instead of test enemy here we say something like enemies dot add new enemy same position same values update for enemy e enemies e dot move we take that oops like so remove that one draw enemy for enemy e enemies enemies all right i think that's good enough let's uh, see if that works all right it still works but we want to call this one and uh, you know what that's not how we do it we're gonna go there and then we're gonna say enemies times x times y and we say add enemy three and nine. Then we do something more. What is that? We just check if it works. It should work. Shouldn't be any different. Yep. Now comes the fun part. We go back to playing or to playing. And we should have some mouse click. If it less else, that means we are in the playing field. We say enemy manager dot add enemy x and y so every time we click on the screen now we should add another enemy so let's see how that looks first off we have the basic one but if i click here we don't do nothing why is that oh that's why we take it time 32 uh, let's remove that let's just go by so and then up here we say times 32 times 32 to get the basic to get the starter one but if we run it now we should get the default one same position but if i click now we're gonna have more enemies can add them as many, many as we want till it starts to lag i don't know where the limit is but uh, i don't think we're gonna have this many enemies at the same time anyways but that yeah that's how we can do it all right everybody that's all for this episode in the next one, we will do more work with our enemy class and we will add some pathfinding for our enemy. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that episode. And if you like this video, why not hit the like button? Thanks for watching everybody, take care and I hope to see you in the next video as well. Bye!